Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Tulsa King. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, sometime after the events of last episode, where uh, uh, Dwight ended up handling things with Nico, he ended up coming to tell Tina because he knows there's going to be. Uh, pushback for what he did, but at the end of the day, he's like, right, it should come down, come after me, they, they'll they come after me, they shouldn't have any beef with you, I'm the one who actually did it, I'm gonna be the one leaving, I'm gonna be going to Tulsa, so they, you know, for him, I, I did love that moment, it's just this powerful moment of, he basically kind of made this comment of, you know what I, you know who I am, you know what I do, and the fact is, I don't know if he's kind of saying like, maybe on some level, he's like, you knew what was going to happen. You know, me being who I am, you know that I was never going to let that go the moment you told me what Nico did. And the fact is, you can believe it or maybe you believe it or maybe you won't, but I do love you. That, yes, you're not, you know, yes, I I bought into the lie of all this code stuff because now he realizes, like, I went away for 25 years for nothing. What did I do? And I lost everything because of that. My decision to be loyal to someone that it wasn't even worth it in the end. I should have been loyal to my family and uh, what was right by them rather than by this pseudo family, you know, the mafia that he's part of. And so it's like... That you're my, uh, you we, you may not always like it, but the fact is, I am your father. You are my daughter, and that bond, it's it's deep. Like it's hard to explain. He's like, but it it's it's in the blood, you know. And despite everything, despite the hardships and the complications for it, I do think Tina is happy that he's gone because she said she was handling it in her own way. I wonder what that was. She she was never gonna probably kill Nico, but she was probably slow rolling it, and it's just. But I think. There is some, there is some alleviation because, as he says, like this is like righteous uh, vengeance, you know, justifiable vengeance, uh, because of what he did, what Nico did. So he ends, that's kind of the last thing he says to her before he ends up leaving. But Chiki is not too, uh, Chiki's not too happy about all of this. Which, in retrospect, it does make me the thing that Manny was talking about, like, oh, like he told, uh. White, what, an ep- like two or two episodes ago or something like that? He was like, yo, you were set up. And I was like, no, it's probably more like three episodes ago. He was like, you were set up. And I'm wondering, I, first I was thinking it might have been Pete, Chicky's dad. But I'm like, it was Chicky, wasn't it? Because he he, hold, he has such an issue with Dwight because Dwight doesn't, like, respect him. Because it's like, for one, yeah, you might be in your position. But he's kind of like, yeah, show me respect. I'm the boss's son. But it's like, yeah, but that doesn't mean jack shit, you know? Um... Because I think even, because even Pete's like, show Dwight some respect. But for Cheeky, it's like, no, 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 I made my name. He's, he's a capo, but I'm in this position. He should show me respect. It's like, the fact is, Dwight is older than you. He did his time. He was doing this while you were still running around in your diapers. Maybe. Obviously, that's probably an extreme exaggeration. But even Pete was like, yeah, he was there at your christening and everything. Like, and he's like, and uh, Chicky's the one that's like, yeah, take care of him and his daughter. And Pete's like, his daughter? His fucking daughter? Because even Goody's like, yo, if we knew what Nico had done, we would have fucking killed him ourselves. And that's the thing, like, why does it matter? Like, him doing what he, because he's like, no provocation or whatever. It's like, Dwight just came in, killed him, like, in the shop, took us five hours to clean it up. But even Goody himself said, like, yeah, we would have capped his ass if we knew what he had done. Because that's, that's some foul shit you just don't do. And it's like, even Pete's like, if, if I had known, I would have, like, basically skinned a bastard alive myself. So... Pete's cutting Dwight a lot of leeway because it's like, yo, the man went to prison for 25 years for me, and that's the problem. And what did he even, and it doesn't help that Pete constantly looks down because he looks at his son and it's like, yeah, you're this and that, but to him, it's like, I'm, I'm kind of the king, like, I'm the, the heir to the throne, essentially, but I'll never amount to enough in my dad's eye. I'll always be kind of lesser than him because he was like, if you, if only you were like half the man Dwight was, it's like, why do you like sing this man's praises and everything? He's old school. He's, he's a relic of the time. Like, this, this is me. This is supposed to be me. Like, I'm the one that's going to take over. I could definitely see, uh, Chicky killing his father, like, or at least expediting it. Like, shit, like, really hits the fan, and he's gonna expedite stuff, kill his dad, and take over, and basically go to war with Dwight. I could definitely say, I mean, he threw down the gauntlet this, at the end of this episode when he ended up breaking, um, uh, Tina's husband's arm. 
So you could, well, not even more than that, just like beating him up. And it's like, you know what that means. Because he knew a direct attack on um, Tina would be off limits. Uh, because also it makes you look, my personal opinion, attacking a woman like that, beating up on someone's daughter like that, makes you even more of a, like, punk. So it's like, he knew, like, the optics of that. So he picked up on her husband who has nothing to do, they are separate from this. So it's like, it's that conversation of, like, that gang mob shit of, you just went after a civilian. You drew someone in to say you didn't have to draw into it. The argument could be like, well, he's part of the family, so he's on limits. So it's like, oh, so you, like, is it on site with my sister or something too? So it that's that's going to be an issue. And Chicky's got... He has no, he, he woke the bear. Like, he shouldn't even done that shit. It's like, right, Dwight doing his thing. He took what you wanted him to do. He went to Tulsa. He's making money. Even Pete's like, yo, if he's sending us money, I don't care. Let him keep doing what he's doing. Because he called Goody up. He's like, yo, are we going to have an issue? Because uh, Tina got a phone call. No one said anything. And Dwight's trying to be like, no, no, it's okay. It's all good. So he went and talked to Goody to try and, like, clean the air. Chicky had an issue with it. But Pete was like, yeah, go ahead and make sure everything's good. It's like, yeah, Dwight's crazy. You talk, you mad at him showing disrespect. It's like, because even the home dude who got laid out, but was it Vince? He wants, like, you know, it's like, yeah, let's go, let's just go ahead and kill him. It's like, dude, you're both going to end up dead by the end of this. You have to, because also Dwight, regardless of, because Dwight's allegiances are to Pete, and even that bridge has been burned. But I'm like, he's got no love for Cheeky, especially. I keep saying Cheeky, check, uh, Cheeky, like especially after this, it's like, no, fuck no, is it? It's on. So, because also Dwight left because he was like, yeah, I have nothing left. And he's like, right, I made sure my daughter's okay. Any trouble I'm bringing, I'm bringing it to Tulsa with me. But as his daughter said, like, right, no matter where you go, bad things are going to happen. It's like, while you're away, bad shit went down in Tulsa. You're back in town, bad shit's going to continue going down in Tulsa. You're not even in New York anymore, but you left a heaping pile of shit that your daughter basically has to clean up and deal with. But uh, circling back to the Tulsa situation, Dwight finds out about everything that went down. He's hitting up Bodie like, wait, what's going on? Where are you? Bodie's kind of going, kind of doing his namaste thing. Then like the FBI rolls up on him because it turns out Stacy uh, and the ATF have an insider. They have an informant on the inside of, a, uh, was it War Tips? Trips? What, what's home? The biker gang leader do? They got an, an insider to his gang and they want... Um, her to pump out information. She drops stuff about Dwight, and I love Stacey's like, oh, that, that, that's kind of who cares about an Italian mobster? We're not worried about nitrous. We're worried. and the guy's like, no, 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 no. What's this all about? Oh my God, that's the guy. You know the Italian mobster guy's like, yeah, but that's not in our purview. And he's the one that contacts the FBI. She was like, no, 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 we don't want the FBI involved. I was like, that's actually sweet. I was like, oh, you're looking out for Dwight. But then later on, she put it in perspective. It's like if they find out about you, they're going to potentially find out about us and my career's fucked. She's like, I just need two more years, and I could get my full pension and you're potentially going to jeopardize that. But at the end of the day, it's also like, regardless of it all, she likes Dwight too. It is self-preservation of all, but she can't help herself because she does like Dwight. And the fact is that it's like, oh, uh, she's, she's like, you're such an asshole. That, but you can tell like, she's kind of like, ah, oh, like this is kind of super messed up because it's like, here I am like sleeping with a, a felon. That's kind of an issue because it's like, yeah, you didn't do anything wrong. It's like, yeah. I mean, when she slept with you the first time, she didn't know you were a felon. The second time she sure as hell did. And plus she kind of called you up because she legitimately enjoys like talking to you. And like, you know, so uh, it seems like it's the first thing that's happened for her like since you know, her divorce, so, uh, you find, uh, companionship in the most interesting of places, you know, so, I love that he's like, right, do you want me to stay, or do you want me to go, because he was like, yeah, I should go, like, I'm gonna leave Tulsa behind, and she was almost looking disappointed, like, oh, oh, oh okay, and he was like, yeah, I might as well move to, like, to Iberia, she's like, you and me, we're kind of in this shit, like, our respective situations, there's always gonna be a cloud above both of us, no matter where we go, so you gotta find something to give a shit about, and he's like, is that you trying to tell me you want me to stay or leave, Stacy? And she just kind of doesn't answer. He's like, I'll take that as a yes. He's like, I would too. Like, she legitimately does like you and would want you to stay. But, um, complicated thing is, though, now she wants, uh, Dwight to, uh, set up, uh, War Trip, but it's like, I can't do that. I'm not a rat. It's like, regardless of it all, they're just, for him, it's like, as a mobster, regardless of my complicated relationship with the mafia I'm a part of, you know, like, from one, like, one bad guy to another, like, you know, one mafia guy to a gang leader, it's like, 
I'm, I'm not a rat. That's just, that's been ingrained in me. You just don't do that, right? Regardless of, yeah, like my situation back home is complicated. This is the man that held it down for 25 years. Granted, he realizes that 25 years was all wasted because it was all for bullshit, but it's still ingrained in him to be like, yo, you don't rat. I'm not about to sell out another criminal. I don't see eye to eye with the dude. But there is almost like some respect because him and Mitch went to have a sit down with Wardrip and it's like, well, because Armand ended up setting that up. Manny slash Armand set that up. So they had their back and forth and he was like, oh, you should have come to me with hand and like asked for permission about selling nitrous. But he's like, no, nah, I'm kind of getting out of the nitrous game. But even if I want to get back into it, I'm going to do it. And no one's going to tell me otherwise. I'm like, yo, I love it. It's so, it's so sick when you see Sly get that, get into his gang. I mean, he, he once again, he's got the swag and he just gets and gets into his gangster shit with like that and just kind of like, yeah. And that, now we're done and just kind of like bounces. So it's like, oh, that was so, uh, so much for uh, diplomacy. And he's like, I never said I was a diplomat. It's like, yo. And that ends up being an issue. It's like, there are times when you, it probably would behoove everyone for a little diplomacy to come through. If it wasn't for that, um, home dude wouldn't have sent like someone to blow up your, blow up, uh, Mitch's, not blow it up, but like lay into Mitch's, uh, bar. Which I also think it's interesting. You sent one dude. I was like, oh, there's only one guy out here. It's what's her, fa I don't know if that's her boyfriend or not. Cause I think that's supposed to be her boyfriend, the guy that was kind of grabbing her and like, what the fuck are you doing? Cause she was asking too many questions. Like, oh, should we really be starting beef with him? Cause he's part of a mafia back in New York and that could be a whole, you know, you're going to be waging war there, which Dwight didn't want to wage war with War Trip either. Cause he's like, yeah, they're bikers. There's so much of it's, you know, they've got the numbers. So we need to handle that a little differently. But yeah, uh, I love that Bodie finally showed it up after getting interrogated by the FBI. They had to check him for um, a wire. And he's like, I really wish you had washed your hands beforehand because you were just eating ribs. And it's like, okay. And it's like, what did you tell them? And it's like, well, yeah, I told him that we're business partners. He's like, you what? It's like, yeah, because we are business partners. I was like, hey. I was like, that's actually, I was like kind of going like getting a little choked. I was like, oh, that's we're, we're, we're business partners. I, probably, I was about to say like, oh, friendship. But it's like, well, business partner doesn't equate to friendship, but you know, it's a friendship in its own right. And he's like, yeah, I told him to kind of fuck off, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I he kind of held it down, which Dwight really appreciated. It's like, he's like, yeah, they took all my money and my weed. He's like, see, I told you. He's like, too soon, dude. But it's like, nah, don't worry about it. We got you. I knew that they already probably had that. Because like, the weed, we already know the weed was already gone by the time they got there. It was like, oh, yeah, like Dwight said. But it turns out Bodie didn't do what Dwight said. So it's like, oh, so they, but it's like, right. They didn't get the weed. So I guess they must have gotten the safe. But it's like, no. Nah. Because they talked about the safe. But when we cut back to the scene, it's like, nah, they didn't get the money because Dwight already cleaned the place out. It's like, everything you thought you lost? Yeah, no, nah, sit down and enjoy dinner. So it's him, Tyson, Manny slash Armand. And uh, Mitch all sitting together, and Dwight's just kind of smiling. He's like, yeah, look at him put together his own little crew. Uh, we get, he like, yo, he's diversifying, and he's just kind of bringing different people into the squad. Because there was the, the horse pilot that he really likes that, uh, you know, the I think he saw it in episode two, right? Maybe it was in episode one as well, but definitely like episode two. And he likes the horse because I think he found a little bit of a kindred spirit. Like, oh, we're both old timers that they're kind of saying like, oh, we're dumb and stupid, which I love. He told that guy, it's like, hey, he was able to out kind of class you. So I kind of escape you. So can't be that old and stupid. But uh, he got Spencer, who was working at like the coffee shop or whatever. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, you want a job? She loves horses. So she's going to be taking care of the horse. Um, what was her name? Wasn't her name Delaney? Her name is Devereaux. I'm confusing her name with the actress uh, Dana Delaney, who plays uh, Devereaux. Um, I should I should have equated because it it's like right. Her name's like Sophie's last name, Devereaux. Uh, either way, tangents and all that side. Uh, I love that uh, he's you know let he's keeping Pilot there for a little bit. You know, and she's like, fine, you get like one week and you're going to have to find somewhere a more permanent accommodation. I'm like, oh, dude, I wonder what how that aspect is going to play out. Those two, like, what's that going to turn into? Um, I wonder, will he kind of use his place as kind of a la money laundering type of thing? Because he's like, yeah, he likes horses, but he's like, ah, I've never been on a never been on a horse, never been on a carousel. But he's like, hey, maybe you give me a lesson or two and maybe I'll start riding a horse or something like that. So... 
I'm, I'm interested to see where things kind of go on that front with Mr. Uh, Miss Devereaux, so how that all plays out. Because, I mean, Armand works there, sure, but it does. It seems like the rest of that operation seems like it's only up and up, so we'll, we'll see, like, whether that just ends up being, once again, another avenue for uh, Dwight to kind of diversify his income and such, so... Uh, but I also love that Dwight offered to, you know, be a business partner with uh, Mitch as well, which I would thought there was kind of already something there. But I guess like the nitrous thing was just kind of a side thing. It wasn't like an official thing. But it's like, hey, I'll buy into the restaurant. It's like, you got good stuff here. Oh, you, you do a little bit of music. Well, you can be the performance for the place. You already got some good food. So he's like, right, you just need a good push and I'm going to push you in the right direction. And he's like, right, give me time to think. He's like, don't worry, no pressure. Well, maybe a little bit of pressure. And then the spot got shot up. They went in there, laid the guy out. And Mitch was like, you know what? You got yourself a deal. It's like, cool. So that all worked out in the end. So, I mean, Mitch already liked Dwight. And Dwight already liked Mitch. So it was like, yeah, this was this is already kind of meant to be. Um, I wonder, did this episode, really quickly, I brought it up earlier. But I am curious, did this episode sour the relationship between um, Dwight and Stacy? And it's like... Right, they're both kind of like, he won't help her, so she's like, right, you're just going to leave me on, out here on my fucking own. He's like, I wish you the best, and she's like, best of luck to you too, because if he gets caught up, it's like, right, you're going to go away for another 25 years, and it's like, right, you can help me take War Trip down, all you have to do is set him up, and it's not just about setting him up and helping yourself out, you'll also be helping me out, but that's not enough for Dwight, and he might try and find another way. I mean, to be fair, it's like, right, this guy... Like, you know, it wants, wants problems, so it's like, okay, so Dwight might have a change of mind and help out Stacy just because it's like, right, this guy made his move. It's like, all right, you know, we kept it semi-diplomatic. I mean, yeah, you got my people, you got the police involved and stuff like that, yada, 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 but now you, like, literally had someone shooting up the place trying to shoot us. It's like, all right, I see, how, I see what time it is. So either he's going to be like, no, I will help you, or he'll just be like, no, I'm going to stick to my coat, but I'm going to handle war trip on my own. Like, I'm going to find a way to deal with it. Because Goody's supposed to be coming out there at some point in time. I love that he was like, yeah, I'm taking a train, I'm not taking a plane. I get it. I'm scared of heights myself, so he's, I've actually, you know, go ahead, I've never been on a plane, nor have I ever been on a train. I'd love to actually you know, take a train one day more so than it ever like uh, flying. F fuck flying. And I'm just too paranoid about it. Once again, the hype thing, and it just get too much. In, I'd get too much in my own head about it. Either way, so that's definitely gonna be interesting to see how that ultimately all ends up playing out going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I'm gonna talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.